through the storm. So tonight, y'all, we're gonna talk about suffering. Love this definition. Pain, distress, injury, loss, or anything unpleasant. All right, who wants some suffering? Yeah, exactly. You know, one of the most powerful things that it is to be human is this thing that we have called desire. It's a powerful force in a human being. And it's simply what you want. What do you want, okay? Now here's the definition of longing, or, 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 or I'm sorry, of want or desire. A longing or a craving as for something that brings satisfaction or enjoyment. <laughs> so just the opposite of suffering. So what do we want? What do you want? I still remember years ago watching uh, the movie Australia. Anybody see the movie Australia with Hugh Jackman in it? Really? Wow, you guys need, all right, two of us, very cool. <laughs> well, in, in this movie, there's this, this uh, they're part of the, this one scene, my wife's already laughing, where Hugh Jackman is underneath this water bucket that's being poured over him and in slow motion, he's ripping off his shirt and the water's pouring down his body, and he gets done, and you just go, I want that. <laughs> and I, hopefully my wife was not saying I want that as well. <laughs> but sometimes you want that. You want that body sometimes. Uh, you may, as an athlete, man, I wanted that ability, right? I wanted to start. I wanted to be excellent. I wanted to be all league. And then I couldn't even think about that ability to play at a college level, and then eventually you become a pro player. And here's what's interesting is then the best, like Barry Sanders and Kelvin Johnson as a huge Lions fan, right? You just look at them and you just go, man, you would love to be able to play like that. There's glory in that. Last week, my wife and I got to go to see Les Mis. Wow. How many of you have seen Les Mis actually live? Unbelievable. Well, it was at Eccles Theater and I'm telling you, I have seen it before. This production was off the charts. Everything about it. It was embarrassing. I was so glad I was sitting kind of at an angle behind Susie so nobody could see me because I just wept. I wept over and over again. And it's the story is fantastic. But it was the excellence of the production. <laughs> it was every vocalist. It was the lighting. It was the sound. And it was just so good. And I, I just know, exactly. I actually have some music background too. I did, was in some musical theaters. And when you see that, and if that's your field, like my daughter Mariah, then you would go, I want to be like that. I want that. Yesterday, whew, my brother had his uh, triple bypass surgery. Yeah. And um, you know what's crazy? Is, and he's doing good. So yeah, I'm so, so grateful. Um, Man, I tell you, it's, it's, it's my dad had a quadruple bypass surgery. My brother's already had a triple bypass surgery. So you can pray for me too, right? That uh, as we're, like, you guys are freaking me out here a little bit with our genes. But all day yesterday, just picturing my brother literally being sawn in two <laughs> and being ripped open and knowing that that was going on with him. And I, I can't, you know what I wanted? <laughs> I wanted a surgeon who knew what he was doing. And I thought, how cool must that be when a surgeon gets done and it's successful and he knows I did it. Like there's something beautiful and glorious about someone who's given that much effort. So I don't know about you. I, I want that. I sure, I'd I want that body. I want that athletic ability. I want that musical talent. I want to be at that level of my field. But you know what I don't want? I don't want the cost that it takes to be that. Anybody else? Okay. I don't want the pain and the sacrifice and the suffering that it takes for that type of glory. Right? I don't want to eat tofu and whatever else Hugh Jackman had to eat to look like that. Or the hours that he had to spend in the gym. I don't want to give up that time. I don't want to have to, it's the sacrifice and the suffering that are there that it takes to have glory. I want the glory. Anybody else want the glory? Do you want the suffering? Not really. 
We, I was going through this with our staff this week and Garrett Hoover, he says, yep, hard stuff results in good stuff. Hard stuff results in good stuff. So we're in a series called Gotta Get You Into My Life. And we're talking about eternal life because Jesus said, eternal life is that you know me. Okay, this is an intimate knowing. That means that you sh- we share life. And that's why we're talking about this. Christ is in us. And now when you, again, when you make a decision, this is a beautiful thing about the Christian faith. When you make a decision of faith, then he says, literally the Holy Spirit comes inside of you and Christ takes his presence inside of you. But you can know him better. So we're looking at all these different ways of how we've got to let Jesus, you guys, into our lives. If we're really going to experience the eternal life, the glory that is ours, okay? Christ in you, Colossians says, Christ in you, the hope of glory, (laughs) all right? Now, that's half of it though. If I'm in a good relationship, I can't just say, hey, get into my life. I have to wanna be in the other person's life. So not only is Christ in us, we're in Christ. And so we're looking at, well, what does that mean? (laughs) Who is Jesus? How does he live his life? Because if I want to experience eternal life down here, And do you, does anybody else want to experience it, this full life that Jesus said he came to give us? Then Jesus is saying, well, then you got to get into my life. Now, I don't know about you. Everybody wants the fruit of the Spirit. This is the funniest thing to me. When I think of what the Bible says, what is the fruit of the Spirit of God, the fullness and essence of Jesus, which would be experiencing eternal life? Love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness, and faithfulness, and self-control. I mean, seriously, go talk to anybody on the street and go, anybody want some joy? No, I'm good. I like my despair. It's wonderful. Anybody want patience? No, I like anxiety. It's, it's a lot better. No, everybody wants those things. But the scripture says, since we live by the Spirit, then you got to keep in step with the Spirit. That's all available to us, you guys, all the time. But you have to keep in step with the Spirit. And then the fruit comes. So that's knowing Christ. So I want to know him. So we're going to talk about Jesus' suffering today. Philippians 3, verse 10. Paul says, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. He goes, man, he has tasted it. He goes, there is nothing like experiencing Christ, knowing him intimately, sharing life with him. He goes, I want to know Christ. There it is. What do you want? Okay, I'm gonna really hit you with this because it's been hitting me all week. I'm gonna hit you with this. What do you really want? What do you desire? What's driving you? Paul's like, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection, right? In Romans 6, it says when we get baptized into Christ, okay, when you receive Christ, you're baptized in, into his death, which means you, you get the experience of being dead to sin, of having all of your sin forgiven. He says, but then you were also baptized into his resurrection so you can live a new life. How's that going for you? Are you living a new life? Paul says, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and sharing in his sufferings. Come on, man. Are you, have you guys been like me? I, every time I'd read that, I'm like, Paul, you're weird. I, I don't know if I could genuinely say in my heart, me too. I want to share in Christ's sufferings. No, man, I want the power of the resurrection. <laughs> Can you say that you want to share in his sufferings? And then he says, becoming like him in his death. And so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Romans 8, 17 says this. Now, if we are children, and that's the argument in Romans 8, he goes, you, you, again, when you receive Christ, you become a child of God. He goes, now, if we are children, then we are heirs heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings so that, in order that, we may also share in his glory. There it is again. 
Jesus did come, you guys, so that we could share in his glory. He literally, God, God, the Father is absolutely committed to helping us be conformed into the image of Jesus. More joy, more peace, more love, more pain, all of that goodness that is Jesus. But we have to share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. So Jesus said it best right off the bat. In Mark chapter eight, verse 34, he called the crowd to him. So here, here he is, Jesus is teaching. And he calls the whole crowd and his disciples. And he says to them, you guys, pretty classic little phrase, whoever wants to be my disciple. So there it is again. What do you want? What do you really want? Jesus says, if you want to be my disciple, you must deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me. For whoever wants, here's the other desire, to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet forfeit their soul? All right, so tonight, you guys, we've, we've, we've just got to, let's just, again, I am so, and you guys, I think if you've been here with me long enough, I'm so not interested in like just going to church, <laughs> like, right? There's so many cool things we could be doing right now. But if we could actually come here with an open heart that actually says, God, I want to know you, man. Jesus, I want to know you. I want to share my life with you. If we open our hearts to this, then tonight we got to ask ourselves this question, what do we want? Really? Do we want to save our life? Can we all just say yes? <laughs> That's the battle every day. I like being in control. <laughs> I like things the way I, that I want them to be. I want to try to save my life. Do we want to just go to church? Isn't that like, isn't this cool? That wouldn't it be amazing if Jesus said, hey, I'm going to die for you. I'm going to totally give my life for you. And all I ask for you is just go to church once a week for an hour. That's, would that be cool? Do we want that? Or do we want to be Christ's disciple? Which means you actually look like him. Which means you actually experience him. Which means you're intimate and you know him. And it's eternal life. Do we want to know Christ? And do we actually want eternal life? Now, what's interesting to me is that this was a statement that Jesus laid before the disciples and the crowd. Because I'm going to be honest with you as I'm going through this, this is kind of a meaty message, all right? In fact, the Bible says there's, there's, there's truth out there and there's milk. And when you're pretty young in your faith, okay? So, and if you're here and if you're young in your faith and, or if you're even just beginning to understand what Jesus is all about, okay, then the Bible says, then you just need milk, okay? Just, just like an infant needs milk, you just take it, and make it's easy, to, it's easy to digest. <laughs> he goes, now, after you've had milk, you know, I just got to tell you, Mariah, if you were walking around with a bottle of milk, I'd be a little concerned. Eventually, you want your kids to grow up, and then you have meat. And this is more of a meat message, but what's interesting to me is that Jesus actually gathered the crowds and his disciples. He just wanted everybody to know, hey, I'm just gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna pull any punches here. If you're interested in actually being my disciple, going to church is one thing. But if you actually wanna know me, okay, if you really wanna know me, this is how it goes. You gotta deny yourself. You're gonna have to take up your cross. And you're gonna follow me. Philippians 3, in the same passage where Paul said, I wanna know Christ, he says, not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. I love that. If you read the NIV, it's like, I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. But the, the reason that this is the ESV, which is actually even a more direct version to the Greek, the reason they said make your own, because when you take hold of it, you take hold of it to make it your possession. So Paul says, I'm gonna press on because I want to make this my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I don't consider yet that I've made it my own, 
But one thing I do, I forget what lies behind and I strain forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ. So that's where we're gonna go today. Like, and, and if you, how many of you, don't raise your hand, please. But how many of you would say, in your desire to know Jesus, you were pressing on? And how many of you were straining forward? How many of you were like giving it everything that you've got so that you could know him? Man, he's that good, you guys. Oh, he's that good. He's that beautiful and he's that loving. So as I look at suffering, there's three types that I see in Jesus, okay? There's three types. The first is if you follow Christ, Jesus says, you will be persecuted, okay? That's just what's gonna happen. First Peter 4, 16, Peter says, however, if you suffer for being a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name, okay? This is a suffering that's done to you. And it's, 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 it's done to you simply because you decide that you're gonna follow Christ. You'll see a passage here uh, coming up here in a minute. But you decide, I'm gonna follow Jesus and I'm not gonna follow the world. <laughs> I have decided to follow Jesus. The cross before me, the world behind me, okay? If we do that, if Jesus just point blank said, hey, just wanna let you guys know, if you actually really do that, you're gonna suffer, okay? Now, we're not gonna talk about that today, Okay? That's a huge issue. It's a big thing. We could do a whole message on that. And in fact, letters are written. Hebrews, the whole book of Hebrews is written because they're suffering. Peter is writing, First and Second Peter, written to a group of people who are suffering this way, okay? But this is a suffering that's done to you. I wanna to talk to you tonight about the suffering that we can choose, okay? And that is right here. Deny yourself because that's your choice. But here's the beauty. If you deny yourself, it's suffering for your victory. It is suffering for your victory. You will run like Barry Sanders in the spiritual world. Oh, bring it. You will sing like the people on stage at Les Mis. But you gotta suffer for your victory, okay? You gotta deny yourself. And then, we're gonna, and then quickly at the end, you gotta take up your cross. And taking up your cross is suffering for somebody else's victory. It's suffering for somebody else to win, all right? So let's look at denying ourselves, the suffering for victory. I want to know Christ. I want to share in his sufferings so that I can experience the glory of the powerful life. James 1, 13 through 15 says this. When you're tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire. I want something. Evil just means the opposite of God, okay? And that's when temptation happens, and every one of us in this room has it. When we're dragged away by our own evil desires and enticed, any fishermen in here? This word actually means, it's the word to catch by bait. <laughs> it's the word for a lure. So they got stuff out there, right? That entices us and it drags us in. That's when, that's when temptation hits. But then listen, then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. In other words, you lose. You just lose. Okay, so temptation. I am very familiar with temptation. Anybody else? Any humans out there? Anyone breathing? Yes. What is temptation? I mean, at its core, it's to say no to God. Uh, the temptation at its core is that I'm gonna say no to God and I'm gonna say yes to myself. I'm gonna say yes to my flesh or I'm gonna say yes to the world and its ways. I'll say yes to that. And then Satan is our third. These are our three, three battlefields, our own evil to stuff inside of us, the world and all of its ways. And then Jesus says, you have a spiritual enemy who's lying to you constantly, okay? He tempts us all the time to say no to God, okay? Now, here's what's cool. Jesus, this is so good, you guys. Jesus was very familiar with temptation, 
Now it's interesting because I don't think Jesus would have had evil desires, okay? But he was in the flesh. He was in the flesh, just like you and I are. And that's an amazing thought because I, it's, it's partly why I love the chosen, right? Because he's such a normal dude, right? The other, you know, too many times Jesus is this ethereal dude with these glazed over blue eyes, you know? And you just look at him and you go, that is so not me. But Jesus was in the flesh. And you have to ask this question. Did he have the same temptations that I have? Does Jesus have the same temptations that you have? Okay. Hebrews 4. We do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who was tempted in every way, just as we are. But he didn't sin. Now, what does that mean? <laughs> we had a very interesting debate about this. But I tell you, th- it, at at, at at least, it must mean that Jesus must have experienced the bait. He must have experienced the lure, which was enticing to him as God in the flesh. And being in the flesh, he must have experienced the desire, at least to some extent, or it couldn't be temptation. You guys follow me here? Okay, So if it was tempting, if Jesus was actually tempted the way I'm tempted, that means there's a desire, there's a lure, there's something that you feel that that can be drawn, that you can be dragged away. And here's the beautiful thing. Jesus apparently was tempted in every way, just as I am and just as you are. And then there's the beauty. And yet he did not sin. Ever, ever. So he was able to look, right? Because he had this great, you, you heard it say, don't commit adultery. I say to you, don't look at a woman with lust. So somehow Jesus must have been able, if he was a man, I'm thinking if he was a man, he must have seen a beautiful woman. And yet somehow he was able to see the beautiful woman and never even move to lust ever, ever. What a guy. That's incredible, okay? So what does this mean? He was never dragged away, desire never conceived, and it never gave birth to sin in Christ. Now look at this, Hebrews 2.18. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Fascinating. How do I share in the sufferings of Christ I believe one of the ways we share in the sufferings of Christ is when we're tempted, we too suffer. You know what suffering is? Suffering is saying no to yourself. Can I get a big amen? Come on, man. Is that not the hardest thing on the planet? The hardest thing on the planet is to say no to yourself. And when you're saying no to yourself, what's yourself doing? It's like it's whining at least, if not crying out and screaming, feed me, whatever movie that was, with the big plant. Your flesh is crying out for it. And when you tell yourself no, you know what you're doing? You're suffering. And Jesus himself suffered when he was tempted. He said no every single time. And so he's able to help those who are being suffered or, or tempted. And you guys, we know this obviously in the garden, right? This is the alt pent ultimate example for us. Did Jesus want to? Did Jesus want to go to the cross? No. See, there it is, right there. What was he doing? Begging his father. If there's any other way, I don't want. And yet, so what, was he being tempted in that moment? Yes, that was a great temptation. I think that's why it's interesting when you watch um, The Passion of Christ. How many of you guys have seen The Passion of Christ? Do you notice what they did in that scene? Did you know Satan was there in the scene? I don't know if he was or not, but they were trying to say, Satan, no question, was whispering 
lying to him, trying to get him not to do what God wanted him to do. And he's doing the same thing to you and to me. And most of the time we just give in and we stop suffering. But Jesus suffered when he was tempted. So he's able to help us when we're tempted. And this is one key way that we share in his sufferings. Hebrews 5.8 says, son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. He learned obedience by what he suffered. So he knew what it is, you guys. He knew what it was to walk in the human flesh and to hear the lies and to see the lures of the world and yet to go that and said, but I'm going to obey. And isn't it cool to know that even Jesus had to suffer when he obeyed? I, I don't know about you, but sometimes I think Jesus was just like, man, this is easy down here. Don't you feel like he was like that? Like, this is cake. That's not what the Bible's telling us. No, he learned obedience through what he suffered. The suffering of feeling the temptation, having it seek to drag away, but you never give into it. Could that have been the suffering? And if he had the power to not be dragged away, that's the power that I need. And so do you. Because giving into temptation, you guys, giving into temptation, all it does is alleviate your suffering. That's why you give it up right? You're just, man, you want that ice cream so bad. God, you want that ice cream. It's killing you. And you're trying so hard and you're suffering. And finally you're like, this is stupid. And then what happens? All the suffering's gone away. It just feels good. That's what happens. We give into it. And then what is there? There's no obedience. There's no fight. We get dragged away. Sin gets conceived, and it leads to death. All right, 1 Peter 4 says, Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves with the same attitude, because whoever suffers in the body is done with sin. Wow. Really? That's fascinating. That's fascinating. But this is a scripture, you guys. This is God's word to us. If you and I are willing to suffer in our body when temptation comes, then that's the process. It's the same thing that Jesus did when he was in his body. As a result, they do not live the rest of their earthly lives for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. For you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans choose to do, living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and detestable idolatry. They are surprised that you do not join them in their reckless, wild living, and they heap abuse on you. <laughs> He's just like, but if you're willing to suffer in your body, you'll be done with sin, and you won't live for those things anymore. You will actually live for the will of God. Which, by the way, you see the other suffering in here? <laughs> What's going to happen if you do this? They're going to heap their abuse on you. Why aren't you falling in line with the way of the world? Anybody feel that already? It's out there, baby. And it's, I think it's just going to get more intense. And what are we going to do? What are we going to do? 1 Corinthians 9 says this. Well, actually, look, I, just, I actually want to uh, give you just a, a few examples here, actually. <clears throat> I've shared this one with, with you guys before. But <clears throat> this is a victory. Okay, I want to share with you a victory for me. The victory for me is, as a night owl, again, Okay, I never started studying until after 11 o'clock in college. Okay, I love the night, that's how I work. <clears throat> but as I found Jesus and got him into my life, I knew it's like, man, my day goes best when I connect with him, right? Confess my sin, receive his forgiveness, read his word, pray. I'm just, man, I can be like this with Jesus. And then I had these kids, and my kids, and by the way, if, if my sin of jealousy is all of you parents who are like, oh, my kids sleep in till eight or nine. Like, this, that's evil and wicked. My kids got up so early. So I had to get up early. Okay? Now, how many for you is that suffering? Yes, it is. But it's suffering for my wife. It's suffering. But I, I'm telling you, this was one of those things where it's like, I need to be with him and I made myself suffer. And I did. That was 
22 years ago. And now it's like, it's, I can just do it. I can just do it. I always used to say that about you guys, you musicians who are really good. Like when you first pick up the guitar, it's suffering. I was so hard. But then once they work at it, it's, not, it's, not, it's so easy. This is the life God has for you. So I had a victory in that suffering. Getting up has become my greatest joy, without question. My other suffering is, uh, yeah, I like to get along with people. I like to be a peacekeeper. I know the Bible says be a peacemaker, but lots of times I like to be the peacekeeper. And because of that, hard things, hard things, painful things, suffering for me is conflict. Anybody else love conflict? Nobody likes, right? That's, it's, it's suffering. But it was so hard for me that there were too many times in my marriage, in friendships, in work, in world where I'm too afraid to tell the truth. Okay? Well, if you're not living in truth, what are you? What are you? You're a liar. It's, it's not truth. When I was on sabbatical in 2018, God made a really, I, I, so, uh, spending more time with him every day. <clears throat> and I just felt like he said to me, you know, Dave, living water takes hydrogen, water takes hydrogen and oxygen. <laughs> it takes hydrogen, it takes both. If you don't have hydrogen, no water. <laughs> Hydrogen's good, but it needs oxygen. Living water is the same thing. Jesus came, the glory of Jesus is that he came full of grace and truth. And he just said to me, until you, David, can get the truth along with your grace, there's no living water. It's actually not really love. And I want to tell you, man, that has been suffering for me. It is so hard. I feel it. The emotional, my fear of rejection or whatever that I've grown up with my whole life. You know, nobody likes me, all that crap I've shared with you guys before. But when that fear rises up, that is suffering. It's emotional pain that I feel. But I want to tell you, due to the staff here and the board here and people who have been willing to be honest with me, they have been pushing me and encouraging me and moving me to be more of a truth teller. I've got a long way to go, but I can tell you this, I'm not who I used to be. And every time, it's what? It's suffering. It's really hard. But you know what else I found? Is almost every time, almost every time, it's turned out good. There is glory on the other side. Okay? That's enough. 1 Corinthians 9 says this. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. How do these guys get the prize? Everyone who competes in the games goes into what? Strict training. <laughs> is strict training pleasant? No, what is it? It is painful. It's suffering. I was just reminiscing of my high school days with another guy when we played high school football together. And just, the, I mean, at the end of practice, our coaches are making us vomit, right? Because we have just run so much. It's been so painful. Why did they do that? So then we got in the game and it was fourth quarter, we could to the other team, right? Everybody who actually wants to win goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that'll last forever. Therefore, I do not run. It's like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and I make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Because that's a choice. It's a choice every great athlete has made. I will suffer the pain and the sacrifice for the glory. It's what every doctor that worked on my brother's heart yesterday did. They wanted to save people's lives. So they sacrificed years and they studied and they worked hard Hard stuff gets the good stuff, okay? So what do we do? What do we do, okay? How do we, how do we share in these sufferings? Number one, you guys, it, it, it really is prayer, okay? Number one, you, it really is prayer. Jesus, when his disciples are falling asleep, what do he say to them? Dude, watch and pray. Watch, be alert, 
and pray. Your flesh, your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak, okay? So when the temptation comes, here's what I know. If I try to fight it on my own, most of the time I'm like, where's that spoon? Give me that, right? Somehow, as soon as it hits, watch, I'm, I, I sense the temptation. Watch, pray. Watch, Jesus, help me. You are able to help me when I'm tempted, okay? We are weak in your weakness. And the scripture said, in your weakness, he knows how to help you. So you gotta pray. Here's the other thing that's fascinating. Isn't it amazing? The Lord's Prayer, probably most of you know this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, the will be done as earth is. Lead us not into temptation, Okay, let me ask you, I, I like to pray, lead me away from temptation. How many, can, how many of you guys ask God to lead you away from temptation? One, yeah, two, or is that you just scratching your head? Okay, um, no, here's what's me. I realize Jesus told us, if you wanna win, then ask God to lead you away from it. I'm like, what a novel idea. So number one, pray. Pray for help when the temptation comes and pray and ask God to keep you away from it, okay? And then the second choice that you, every one of us has is do what Paul did. You can, you can go into strict training spiritually. You just can. Every one of us can make this choice to go and do a discipline. You've got the discipline of fasting, right? I'm saying no to food. No to that desire and my want so that I can have more of God. You can have the discipline of service, it's just, again, we don't love to be the first in line to serve. And if you find that your flesh is going, no, then what discipline that you can make is I will serve. I will be the last in line. I will humble myself. Those are all decisions that we can make that actually help beat our body. And it helps us to suffer so that we can experience the glory. Fellowship is actually a discipline. It really is. And especially with those outside your circle. Jesus said, if you just hang out with people who are like you, he goes, pagans do that. He goes, there's, there's no reward in that to hang out with your friends. He goes, if I'm in you, I love everybody. Well, I'm gonna tell you this. Your flesh is probably not going, man, I love to hang out with people I don't like. That's not your flesh, that's your flesh. You don't want to. So a discipline to follow Jesus is deny yourself, take up your cross and love someone that you don't like. Get outside your circle. That's a discipline that you can do to help you guys experience glory. You know, and we'll talk about this in another message, but given financially, <laughs> regularly, disciplined, generously, man, that's another thing that says no to your flesh because our flesh likes every dollar to go towards itself. All right? And then the last thing, and I'll close and we'll do our final thing. You guys, the last thing is take up your cross. <laughs> Jesus said, take up your cross. And here's what I want to tell you. When you take up your cross, it is always for someone else. That's what it is. Jesus says, you want to follow me? Do you actually want to look like me? Then here's the suffering that your flesh needs. Deny yourself. Take up your cross for another person. First Peter 2, he says, if you suffer for doing good and endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. What was the cross? He suffered for you, leaving us an example so that we should follow in his steps. So then Ephesians says, follow God's example. Okay, that's what, that's what it said. As dearly loved children, walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. The cross is always giving yourself up for someone else. So Galatians 2, Paul says, I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You guys, the cross is the heart of it all. The cross is the the wisdom of God. In Corinthians, it says, we preach Christ crucified. The power of God and the wisdom of God was a man being brutally abused on a cross. 
That right there, you guys, the cross is the glory of God. It is the most glorious thing that's ever happened in all of human history. It's the power of God. It's the wisdom of God. It's how we know what love is. It's the love of God and it's the glory of God. What is it? I give up my life so you can have life. That is suffering. And that is what every one of us needs is Jesus who gave himself up for me. That's why Paul said, the life I live in this body, selfish body, I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. One last passage and then we'll go to communion in just one song. But listen to this, 2 Corinthians 4. We are hard pressed on every side, not crushed, perplexed, so perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, not abandoned, struck down, not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus. So obviously it doesn't mean to go physically die. He goes, I always carry in my body the death of Jesus. What is that? It is the death of self and love for another. I carry around the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that his life may be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. You guys, the greatest thing, why did Jesus say the greatest thing is love? The greatest thing is you suffering in your body by dying to what you want and giving your life to another human being. That's being an imitator of God as a dearly loved child. Loving just like he does. So Ben, come on up. So we're gonna take communion, man, because this is what we need to do. If you do not have one of these cups, will you just raise your hand real quick and we have some people who can make sure that you get them. Um, that'd be great. Okay, so... Hey, let's, let's, let's actually really do this, man. Let's really do this. So I want you to think about this. I want you to think about this. What do you want? Do you want to know this Christ right here? Do you want to share in his suffering? Which is why he said, remember this. Remember how I suffered for you. Remember how I died for you. Remember how I gave my life for you. Is this the Jesus that we actually want to know? Because if it is, as we commune with him right now, then we will walk out of this building and we will love like he loves. We're gonna share in his suffering, okay? So take, the, take his body. And here's what, this is fascinating. Um, what Jesus actually said on that night when he broke the bread, he said, this is my body given for you. That's what he said. I'm giving my body for you. That's the cross. Why? Because I love you. I love how Paul says that. Because so many times I read the book, it's God loves us. And he does, he loves us. But I love when Paul said, the life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me. Hey, so here's the deal. Now, as you take this, it's gonna go in you, <laughs> right? This thing right here is gonna become part of your body. And we're doing this because we want Jesus in 
our lives as the one who sacrifices his life. And that's why in Romans it says, in view of his mercy, offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. Okay? So think about it. Is that really what you want? Do you want the love and the joy and the peace and the goodness of Jesus fully? Then we offer our bodies as he offers us his body. Okay? So, in view of his mercy, in view of his love, let's take and let's eat. Let's bring Jesus into our life. Then he took the cup and he said, hey, listen, I know there are gonna be so many times when you don't say yes to me. (laughs) I know there's gonna be so many times where you give into your flesh and you don't suffer and you fall in temptation and you experience death. Man, I love Hebrews. It says, then let the blood of Christ cleanse your conscience from acts that lead to death so that you may serve the living God. Jesus Christ died. And when his blood was shed, it covered every sin you've ever committed and ever will. So let it wash you clean. Tell him again, Jesus, I confess to you, oh, how I need you. I need the power of your life in me, but I need you right now. Wash me clean. Forgive me for every time I said no so I can get up, walk out of here and serve you. Let's drink and let's celebrate his forgiveness of all of our sin. All right, let's stand together. Diego and our team are gonna lead us through one final song. We're gonna sing this, I have decided, I have decided, I've decided what I want and what I want is to follow Jesus. The cross before me, okay? You're gonna sing this, don't just sing it, mean it with your heart. I wanna experience the cross. I wanna share in his sufferings with the world behind me. No turning back, all right? Let's give him everything we got, let's sing.